ahead and get this started. Perfect. Welcome everyone to, once again, Southeast Regional Webinar Series. Uh, this is a great opportunity as ICF chapters from all over the Southeast region and as we're learning from other parts of, of the world as well. We're excited to have everyone here. Uh, just to let you guys know, we're going to give you some introductions here, get you set up, make sure you have all the rules of the road, the rules of engagement um, as we move through today. But again, welcome, and we're so excited to have you here. Now, I said excited, and you may be like, well, why should I be excited, Tanya? <laughs> Well, let me share with you. Um, just so you know, my name is Tanya Eccles and I am the chapter president of the ICF Georgia chapter, but I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And when you join one of our Southeast Regional Webinar Series calls, you are actually entering a collaboration that's between 15 different chapters in the Southeast region. And we've got nine of them occurring this year in 2020. We've already had several that have been extremely successful already and we're jumping in here as the Georgia chapter to share one of our webinars and, and continuing to really grow and develop from the learnings that we can uh, pull together as a united group of, of regional chapters. So it's just, it's such a great opportunity for us all to be engaged. Um, again, as I mentioned, these are the 15 chapters in the Southeast region, nine times a year. The purpose really is really for our professional development series to offer this continued learning opportunity, which allows us to establish, to bring in established industry experts like the ones you're going to hear from today. And uh, this is really something that may not be otherwise available to different audiences, different chapters, or, or different parts of our region, and giving us all an opportunity to interact online with other coaches in the ICF, um, in our Southeast region, and globally. The Hello Canada, we see you there. Um, and just engage in really high quality professional development while we're also earning CCEUs, because we know we want and need those as well as certified uh, coaches, as credentialed coaches through the ICF. So we're just excited to have you here and have you joining us for all of these webinars, and, and we're looking forward, forward to our uh, experience today. And the title of our uh, webinar today is The Three Lenses, Three for coaching supervision and developing a reflective practice for coaches. And this is uh, an area that I'm so excited to dive into because honestly, I wanted to know more, more about it, which is why I went searching for Ken to uh, get some more information and he's kind enough to come and bring this to us today. Um, again, I'll be your moderator for the day, but Ken and, and, and Lori are gonna jump in and really take it over and, and walk you through it as we learn more from them about the topic of coaching supervision. What is this thing? Why is it important? And why is it so important for us as coaches uh, credentialed through the ICF to start to take notice and think about how we might wanna incorporate this into our own coaching development. But before we do that, let's go over a few tips that are gonna help you make the most of your webinar experience. So you see here, uh, just so you can kind of get a lay of the land as to how this works. Um, first, you see that you're open up here in, the, in, the, in your Zoom experience. You see your audio settings that are in front of you. Um, you can adjust some of those. Uh, if you have, you wanna test your speakers, test your microphone. <coughs> Excuse me, that is how you do it. Um, also, we are gonna give you some opportunities to raise and lower your hand during the session to uh, volunteer. We're actually gonna need some panelists. So if you'd like to come on live with us and be a part of a little panel uh, coaching supervision um, activity, make sure you raise your hand and uh, also make sure you have a really strong internet connection and you're in a pretty quiet, relatively quiet background. But we would like you to be able to raise your hand. As you see there, the little hand lights up. You can raise your hand. We know you're interested and uh, bring you on with us. You can also submit comments. Either you can continue in the chat <coughs> Excuse me for the coughing, uh, but you can continue to catch up and connect. I always like to call the chat the cocktail hour. It's the happy hour over here. So you're just connecting and engaging with each other. But then also, if you have specific questions that you'd like Ken and Lori to answer, uh, please put those in the Q&A as well. So know that you have that Q&A box that will allow you to do that. And you can type in your questions and we'll see it. And that way it doesn't get lost in, uh, in all the fun that happens in chat. All right, and um, I think that's it. So yeah, your view options for the top of the display, <laughs> you can view um, in full screen, but you can also view as in the speaker view. So it only focuses the video on the person speaking at any one time or gallery view. And we'll give you some hints as to how to kind of 
na navigate through that as we go through today. Um, but you may want to start off in speaker view just so you can always kind of stay focused on the person who's speaking at the, at the moment. And what I'd love to see you guys do in the chat right now is just to get us warmed up here and, and give uh, Ken and Lori some, some additional insight on what's going through your minds. What is one thing that you'd like to gain from the webinar today? You obviously signed up and showed some interest. So we'd love to see a quick phrase or quick word about what you wanted to learn from today. So just fill up the chat here with all your information and welcome to everyone. I see all of you here. There's Lubna, yay everybody, Janine. Um, so yeah, great. Awesome. So just fill that in and, and love to see what you have out there. Just learn more about the topic, more about supervision. Yeah. So just trying to get some really good general information. Expand your supervision skills and mindsets. That's wonderful. Um, understand the three lens model, how to be a better coach, reflective practice for myself. And as coaches, again, in the times that we're in, that can be um, really challenging for us to take the time to do that. So this is a great opportunity to learn how coaching supervision can be a more formal way that we can actually start to incorporate this um, and the skills that we can learn that will allow us to bring it even when we're not under formal coaching supervision. So that's great. Yeah, the three lenses. Well. So Ken, they're all here for the right stuff. So you and Lori are set up just to come through this uh, with no problems. A few other just quick things, and I promise we're gonna let Ken do what he's here to do. Um, but just to be aware that um, I believe we did confirm this with Ken <laughs> earlier, but you will have a copy of the slides that he's going to present today. Uh, you are going to also receive your CCEs for this webinar if you registered and you attended live. So if you're here, you have registered and you've attended live. So I think we're covered on that. Um, and th just a reminder, if for some reason, you know, someone that wasn't able to show up and they ask you about it, just a reminder, you do have to be here to live. So you're not eligible to receive your CCEs uh, if you're not actually here. Um, we will capture your attendance based on the email that um, uh, you entered when you registered. If you have some question or something comes up, you can email the amazing Anique Clemens uh, from ICF Global and uh, she can connect you at AniqueClemens at CoachFederation.org. So if you do have any questions and you feel like maybe I'm signed in from a different uh, Zoom account or I didn't give my cor correct email, just make sure you contact Anique and let her know and then we can figure that out with you there. Um, and we will ask you for feedback. We are always wanting to continue to expand and grow and develop these sessions. So all attendees are going to receive a link to a brief survey uh, after we complete our, our webinar today. So just know that we do want to hear back and continue to grow and develop these sessions for your benefit. And with all of that said, now <laughs> we're going to move into our featured speakers. Um, we're so lucky to have with us today, Ken Giglio and Lori Seg. Sigworth, yes, I got it right, um, who are joining us today. Um, just thrilled to have you both here. Before we turn it over, just give you a quick high level. Uh, Ken is the principal of Mindful Leadership Consulting, which is a leadership consulting and executive coaching firm that partners with executives and teams in global organizations and also offers coaching supervision in partnership with both their internal and external leadership coaches. Um, Ken has a degree in psychology from Fordham University and he obtained his executive coaching certification from the Hudson Institute of Coaching and Ken is also a certified um, coaching supervisor through the Coaching Supervision Academy CSA where he is currently uh, working with the faculty on that team. And Lori is a seasoned executive coach consultant and coaching supervisor. She brings a very unique and potent set of skills and experience in service to her clients and including relevant real world reasoning um, because she spent many years as a C-suite executive herself. So she knows all those challenges in and out, I'm sure, as well as just a keen listening ear, powerful questioning techniques and a thorough education in coaching, coaching supervision and OD organizational development practices. And Lori is also a certified master coach through the Hudson Institute and received her coaching supervisor certification. Also, guess when, where? The Coaching Supervision Academy. So we're so happy and uh, excited to have you here with us. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let you all know, and I'll pop it over to you and Ken. Thank you so much, Tanya and Tuini and all the chapter leaders and, and everyone that's here and volunteers for ICF in these presentations, what a great learning community. Even though I'm in Pennsylvania right now and Lori's in Ohio, we're really part of the global, uh, national and global ICF uh, community. And we're really very pleased to be here. 
It's an honor to be with all of you. Thank you for inviting us to be with you here today. Um, this topic has never been more important. This notion of supervision and reflection. Um, I'm sure many of you are noticing what Ken and I are noticing in our practices, which is we have clients that are carrying very heavy loads. And when we're carrying those heavy loads that can transfer to us as coaches if we're not careful about managing what's happening with us. And so there's an opportunity today for us to embrace a model to look at how we might reflect and process what's happening in ourselves, what's happening in our clients in service of their ultimate needs and wants. So thanks for having us today. Yes, it's, and we're both so passionate about coaching supervision. We went through the Coach Supervision Academy certification together uh, as colleagues. We had known each other and were friends and have done work together. You know, and, and today really the overarching purpose is to really provide you with an understanding. It could be a baseline for some, others may be more advanced. What is coaching supervision? How does it work? Why does it really matter to our practice and to the broader field? So before we step in with the agenda, Christine Bacher, who's also a coach and part of our team, she was, she's managing the chat. She's going to put up a poll right now to see who's in the room, who's, who's here today. If you wouldn't mind filling this out. You know, we've done a number of these uh, webinars and it's, it's really uh, a welcoming space for wherever you are in the learning process about supervision. So we're almost there um, in terms of ending the polling. I think we can probably close it down in a second, Christine. So as you can see, as you're all looking, um, some are really coming for the first time. Uh, you're, uh, Tabula Rosa, just really wanting to understand it for the first time. Many of you have been in those really good conversations with your peers, a uh, little over half of you. Uh, you know, you've heard of it. So almost 30% um, really unaware uh, have heard of it, but really, you know, no experience of it. We have um, some certified supervisors like ourselves, and 13% uh, of you are already receiving some supervision. So thank you for, for that. This just gives you a sense of who you're with and your colleagues and also helps Lori and I to uh, tailor this. Uh, and please, as we go, thank you for, uh, for that, Christine. We can take it down now. There we go. So let's step in and take a look at what we're going to uh, cover today. Let me just um, advance my slides if I can. And for some reason, I'm not able to. So give me a second, please. Sometimes it, it uh, helps if you uh, use your arrow keys as well. Yeah, I tried both. So let me just do this, give me a second. Thanks for your patience. Hopefully we'll get it going here. Try here, there we go. Great, okay. So it's just some additional housekeeping. Uh, we are recording now, but we won't be recording during uh, a demonstration. So just so you know, uh, and we'll be asking about that in a second in terms of volunteers. So we really wanna start out by understanding the definition and the function of coaching supervision, especially for that good um, uh, number of you who would really like to understand what it is, how it differentiates from mentor coaching and coaching covering a little bit about its importance to coaching, talk about the current state. We have some good research that's come out about the current state of supervision around the globe, and we can talk a little bit about it here in the United States. Uh, as I mentioned, we wanna really make sure you understand the differences and differentiate between the different professional functions and identities. Talk about that tri-lens coaching supervision model as a way to reflect within dialogue with a certified supervisor, what it really means, how it works, how it functions, and then 
The fun part is having and experiencing supervision uh, as a reflective practice. So that's what we're really excited about is having you watch and observe, but also participate in supervision. And here's where I'll put out the quick advertisement that we're going to be looking for five volunteers and you can raise your hand at any time during this uh, presentation and Christine will um, capture that. You'll become panelists and it will be a group within a group. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go and then we'll have time for questions and answers. But during the upfront piece here and further in, you can chat in your questions uh, at any time. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we move forward? Just welcome to the space. We're delighted to have you and uh, we invite you to take notes, do whatever you need to do to embrace the learning today um, and set an intention for yourself. Just maybe take a minute and think about how you want to show up today. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I love that idea of setting an intention for our learning. Great. So let's step in and take a look at definitions, all ICF definitions. So we're all coaches here. Uh, not a surprise around the definition of coaching, really that partnership to really evoke excellence from others, as uh, you know, John uh, Flaherty says, and I really like that definition. We're really going toward a goal in coaching and maximizing that personal and professional potential. Going down to the bottom in terms of mentor coaching, and not just mentoring, but mentor coaching we're talking about within the framing of the ICF. It's about the credentialing process. It's that supportive, collaborative conversation that really appreciates where you are on your journey in terms of your competence and increasing your capability. All the things to do with the markers. Lori is a uh, mentor coach, everything to do with the tapes. And in the middle, coaching supervision, which, was our which is our focus today. Collaborative learning practice. We're looking to build capacity within the coach through reflective dialogue to highlight that reflective dialogue piece for the benefit of both the coaches and the clients, and I would add their organizations. So if I had to say the one thing that coaching could not be without is a goal, right? We have to have a goal when it comes to coaching. The one thing you can't be without with mentor coaching is a focus on the competencies or it's not mentor coaching. With coaching supervision, it is about the reflective dialogue and reflective practice. So if we're talking about the one thing, now we're gonna talk in a moment and look at the crossovers between them, but if you had to say those are the one thing for each, that's what I would highlight. And before we go into the functions, Lori, anything you'd like to add? All good, Ken. Great. So, so what does supervision actually do? You know, uh, Peter Hawkins, uh, Bridget Proctor and others over the course of time, uh, and just as a quick caveat in terms of time, coaching supervision evolved from the psychological and psychotherapy models in the UK and in other places and migrated into coaching as many of those practitioners became coaches they said, wait a minute, as practitioners, as psychotherapists, we were in supervision from the beginning. Who's going to be helping us with our continued growth? So they moved supervision into the coaching frame and started to build out different models and said, these are the functions. We're going to help coaches continually develop. Really, this is important to harvest their learnings in that reflective dialogue space, build their capacity Yes, competence can be there too, but it's their capacity in terms of how they practice and how they reflect on their work with their clients. What does it mean to resource and to restore ourselves to really be our best selves during our sessions? Coaching uh, takes a lot of energy and focus and attention. And there are times when we may feel a bit depleted a little worn out, we need to really resource ourselves and doing that in supervision is another one of the functions, restorative function resourcing. And the other one is really qualitative, this normative, how are we really looking at the quality of our work and the integrity of how we're showing up with our clients with an attention to ethics, boundaries, contracting, and yes, 
the competencies as we live them and breathe them from the ICF, which is so helpful. Those are the functions of supervision as we use them. So moving further, um, I just wanna say that as we look at what the benefits are, we have some really good research that came from my colleagues, uh, Terry Hildebrand, uh, you know, Lillian Adams, and we had Kim C. They went around the globe and they polled different coaches as to what is it that you're getting out of coaching supervision. They were leadership coaches, life coaches, they were clinicians that became coaches, and you can see the representation here. 72 countries, there were almost 600 respondents. These are the top areas, and you can see the size of the circle uh, indicates what was their most impactful benefit or learning. I can just tell you that for myself, this tracks to my own learning. New perspectives, insights, approaches. I'm sitting with another experienced coach who's also a supervisor to help me gain insight into my practice. Developing myself as a coach practitioner. Taking the time to take a breath from my practice and breathe and reflect. Support that I receive. Reassurance that resourcing is critically important. Now, this is a very important uh, research piece that tracks to what we learned from other research from the ICF. This is what had been pulled back in 2017 that as coaches went through this process, they increased their self-awareness, that mindful reflection that helped them to know really both reflecting on practice and in practice, how they're actually showing up with their clients, building their confidence, increased objectivity, this aspect of taking a step back, really being more ethically mature, not just looking at a sheet of paper with ethical guidelines. How are we really sharing stories within a supervision conversation? This heightened sense of being together and also that reduced feeling of isolation and that normalizing. I had the good opportunity of being with very experienced um, coaches and coach supervisors before this webinar, um, facilitating another level of certification for the European Mentoring and Coaching Council. And I asked them, I said, so I'm gonna be doing this presentation. What would be one of the things that you would say to a group of coaches about coaching supervision? And one of the things was about this aspect that you're not alone. When you're sitting with a colleague and reflecting on your practice, you don't feel alone anymore. You can talk about some of those areas of self-doubt that come up in coaching. What's actually going on for me inside of me? What questions do I have about ending an assignment? Uh, coaching can be a lonely endeavor. We have our colleagues and our peers, but once we start doing the practice, we can't invite our peers and colleagues into the sessions with us, right? But supervision in a way is like that. You can really talk openly about everything that's going on. And there can be some honesty and truth telling is another one of my colleagues said in that session that I just had that increased resourcefulness and that resilience that can come from really going deeper with a colleague who cares about you, cares about your practice, and wants to see you be the best coach you can be. Lori, thoughts? Love this, Ken. The only thing I would add is, so we are, we're all on this desired path to be a master coach. And I think if we're really serious about it, we realize that it's, it's a destination we'll never fully reach if we embrace the notion of continuous learning. And a great way to add some rigor and, and responsibility to that path is to engage in supervision. Where am I going to really check what's happening with me and lean into that next level of growth? Um, so I applaud you all for being here today. Thank you. Yeah, no, I would concur. And, and um, it's important always uh, to understand that supervision is an invitation. Uh, it, is, it is, yes, it is a requirement in some spaces. It is not currently for the ICF. It is for EMCC, 
Uh, some organizations are requiring it for coaches to be in supervision to do coaching in their organizations. That wave is coming. I'm confident of it. It's already there in Europe. But here today, it is an invitation. It's an invitation, and that's what we'll be doing when we even have the practice about it. So stepping in further, here is the ICF's position on coaching supervision currently, as it evolves. Uh, and they're very thoughtful and deliberate at the top leadership in terms of looking at supervision, supporting it. Many of the former ICF global presidents and others that are um, master coaches are also coach supervisors and are leaders in the coach supervision community, as Lori and I are part of several networks uh, and also part of the faculty uh, of different coach training programs, as I am with the Coach Supervision Academy. Support, as you can see, for full-time coach practitioners, part of your portfolio for continuing professional development. That key phrase, designed to keep them fit for purpose, really important because that's what we have to keep focusing on because we are in service of our clients. We want to be truly at our best. You know, that is what it is about. And yes, if you're in supervision, you can submit 10 hours toward your core competency uh, requirements, which I think is, is important and, and a big deal. So as we step in next, I want to get further into understanding the distinctions between supervision, coaching, and mentor coaching. The reason we spend good time on this, Lori and I, is because here in North America, especially in the United States, um, no, for no reason other than many of us are just learning about it, and some of us are going about doing supervision or in supervision, we want to create some more clarity around what it is, what it isn't, and where some of the crossovers are. So let's start taking a look here. As we saw with the definition, this is about reflective dialogue supervision is, learning partnership, co-equals, that's an important concept. Now we're looking through multiple lenses, and I have a supervision model we'll be talking about in a little while, and this is taking also a meta perspective of what's actually happening within the coaching space with the coach and the coachee, and also within the organization or whatever the system is that happens to be your coaching within. Some of you may be life coaches, transition coaches, coaching within hospital systems, internal, external, it doesn't matter. We're all within a system. Again, we know what coaching is about. It's really evoking and not telling, right? Supporting development, goal achievement, right? Uh, that is really, truly important uh, for the coach and the coachee. Mentor coaching, expertise, modeling, teaching, competence building, to transfer a skill, knowledge, technique, all the things that go into, yes, the certification process, but building that real got confidence and competence to really feel um, your feet in your shoes as you're sitting with your client. Very important piece there. Let's step in now to this next slide for some of the overlaps and the distinctions. You know, as you can see between supervision and mentor coaching, we can have some telling of experience. We could use specific methodologies to give some guidance. There is a teaching element and some mentoring that goes within supervision, and that's a part of what can be happening. And that's a bit of a crossover there, uh, as you can see between mentoring and coaching in terms of how a person shows up, or how a practitioner shows up, excuse me. Both mentor coaching and coaching, you know, this is involving how we're showing up about the competency level for purpose and modeling competencies. Um, this is uh, really about responsibility for the coach client development rather than the greater system. That's critical. 
There's both of that. There are going to be questions throughout each of these, supervision, mentor coaching, and coaching. One of my favorite stories I like to tell is um, teaching supervision in CSA, observing a supervisor, new supervisor, supervising a coach. And at the end of the session, it was triad. The supervisor said, you know, I asked a question. I wasn't sure if it was a mentoring question or a coaching question or a supervision question. And I hadn't planned this answer. And I said, well, it was just the question. And it depends on the context of where we're asking a question. I could ask my son or a daughter a question. Uh, it doesn't have to be a question, but it may be similar to a question I'm asking in a coaching session. It's the context that matters as to how the question is being placed. So with mentor coaching, the question is going to be with the coach about confidence building, with the coach being with the coaching client, it's going to be about how they're exploring to get from here to there, right? In supervision, the question would be, well, how are we reflecting on how you're coaching with your client? So a question is a question. It can be powerful or not. It's just how it's placed. Uh, so here we have now supervision and coaching. We're really involving an increase in self-awareness, voicing experience, believing that, you know, whole and resourceful self, respecting difference, being willing to go with intuitive feelings. I think that can, you know, cut across all of them. You know, and now to look at all three, right? We're really looking at valuing equal power in a relationship. This is important, and this is one of the uh, hallmarks that we want to be aware of in all of these different relationships as co-equals so that we can be aware of and call out if we need to uh, elements of deference or power where they may be. So that mutuality, self-respect, observation, noticing, these cut across all of these professional identities. And they're really important to acknowledge that they're part of all of what we do as supervisors, mentor coaches, or coaches. Now here's where I'd like to just highlight what's really important because it is about distinctions and here's where the confusion as I've seen it and then Laurie I'll bring your voice in generally and then specifically on this because as a mentor coach would, would like to hear from you. As we get our um, you know in a sense grounding here in the U.S. with coaching supervision because it's still relatively new. As you could see from uh, the polling, uh, just over half of you really are familiar, maybe using it within peer coaching groups. Uh, only a few of you are coach supervisors or are in supervision. There's a confusion as to who does it, how it happens, where it happens, how much you do, all those different things. And, and what we're seeing around this, and it's important I think for our professional identity, is that a bit analogous to, no, it is directly analogous to back in the late 90s when I first started coaching and people were calling themselves coaches, but they were more consultants or they were therapists who wanted to be coaches. And then ICF was coming in and I went to the Hudson Institute and we were putting parameters around it and becoming certified by ICF. People are calling supervision or doing supervision when it is not being done by someone who actually is a certified supervisor and has a requirement, just as an ICF coach does, to a set of competencies. And we as certified supervisors have a set of competencies from the EMCC. So that's just an important distinction. The quick story being, uh, as the hundreds of coaches that I've interviewed from my business over the years, I require them to have supervision. Many of them have had mentor coaches and some of their mentor coaches, um, all well-intentioned, are doing supervision, but they're not certified. And what I would say to that is, it may be a fine conversation, it may be around reflective practice, but it may not have the appropriate depth and focus as to what we're trying to do with coaching supervision. So that's just an important distinction out there to remember as you think about your own journey and if you're choosing to be in either one-on-one -on -one or group coaching supervision. Because again, 
I, as a PCC, but not a mentor coach, would not do mentor coaching. I do mentoring, but I'm not going to help anyone work with their competencies to get a certification. And by the same token, a mentor coach wouldn't be looking or certified to work to do that depth of reflection for coaching supervision. The last thing I'll say about it is that many um, coaches, and this was highlighted with my group just a few moments ago, are really doing well with their peer coach groups. You know, they meet monthly, they quasi-supervise each other, they bring cases, and that's all well and good. Again, you're scratching the surface there, as my colleague said, his words, the depth of working with a certified supervisor in a very safe space is a different experience, just to be clear, right? Again, analogous to someone who may be playing with coaching and not certified versus you as certified coaches. Something may come from it, could be valuable, but this is what I would call the real deal in short. Lori, would you like to add something to this? Yeah, I love this, Ken. So in my work as a mentor coach, which I, I absolutely love, you know, the ICF has done such a beautiful job of creating these competencies for us as a grounding agent for what good coaching looks like and what a coaching development journey looks like. And walking alongside with those folks, we set a goal together. What do we want to learn? And it gives me permission to lean into more of a telling space than I would typically be in with, with my coach hat on. Um, so it's explorative, but it's within the context of these competencies, and as Ken said earlier, with a goal in mind. When I'm doing supervision work, it's much more meta work. We're looking for the big patterns. We're looking for parallel process. We're as deeply curious as we can be without a goal in mind. We're on a reflective, explorative journey to notice whatever shows up and none of it is right or wrong. We're not trying to get anywhere. And hopefully you'll see some of that when Ken and I do a demonstration later. Yes, thank you, Lori, for that. That's, that's really helpful. And uh, Christine is grabbing your questions. Please feel free to put them in the chat and then we'll bring them up um, in the Q&A because we wanna do the best we can in this short period of time to create clarity and you know, bring some bigger flashlights into the fog sometimes that can be, what is this and what is that and how it works? And that's why it's so important to have you experience it versus just talking about it, which I find I'm actually doing a lot of right now. So what we're gonna step into now and transition to is the way in which I have been framing coaching supervision with a model that I've been developing over the past six years. So I'll just show that to you here. And as you take it in, just give you a quick background. So I've been developing this model uh, for over six years, but going back into the 90s when I started my mindfulness practice, it was really important for me to integrate into all my work, and now especially into coaching supervision, a framework for me to go deeper with my practice that reflects the best of who I am as a coach and as a supervisor in the space that I work in with coaches. This builds on the shoulders of other uh, practitioners, thought leaders, Peter Hawkins with his seven-eyed model, Bridget Proctor and others, wanted to narrow it down, make it more simple, and also tie it to some theories, one of them which being Donald Schoen's The Reflective Practitioner, we're reflecting on action and in action with this model. We're talking about our coaching cases with the supervisor, but we're also talking and reflecting in the moment of what's happening with us as we reflect on that coaching case. It's also about theory you, not knowing, and presencing and sensing what could be in the moment for us at that time, <clears throat> to me. It also ties to research on emotional, social, and systemic systems intelligence. So as you can see, this model has 
three lenses, but I want to focus first on the center of the model because this is the starting place for all that the model is about. It's this place of attention and presence. It is where we return again and again and ask ourselves, what am I noticing? What am I sensing in my body and my surroundings? It's this depth space of centering and stabilizing our attention and creating embodied presence, critical presence for all of us as coaches and supervisors. From this space of awareness and depth, non-judgmental space, non-interpretive space, preferences being let go, we can look through three lenses. And the first being, what's going on in the self lens? What's going on inside the coach in this conversation with the supervisor and also perhaps inside the supervisor, in the supervisor and in the coach? Talk a little bit more about that within session, but here we're really talking about this view into ourselves, this honesty about what our mindsets are, what's going on within our emotional landscape, how are we curious or not, what might be our biases, right? Really about emotional intelligence and inner well being. As we look to this other lens for centering back in the, into attention and presence, the client lens is really with others, it's outside in. What's going on in this relational lens? What's the quality, the integrity of our relationship? What's going on within the coaching practice itself? You know, how am I listening deeply, empathizing, even the specifics say around contracting? What do I need to be specific in building a bridge with this client? How do we look at that through the coaching supervision reflective dialogue? all about the reflection, right? Now we have the systems lens after centering again in the middle. What's going on in the culture? You know, what is there in terms of dynamics that are changing? How is the organization being reorganized? How are they in flux? What's happening in the business environment? What can you hear and sense in the hallways of the organization? Again, systems intelligence, organizational intelligence. And as you can see, this model these three lenses, the systems wrapped in other systems, the global markets, the geopolitics, what's happening right now cannot be um, more impactful to us in our lives as never before. A pandemic, a changed world from March until today. All of us living within a different system that's impacting businesses, families. One of our coaches lost her mother, got sick with COVID herself, was in the hospital. It's right here. It's in front of us. It's in our families. And then, you know, with the murder of George Floyd, you know, this is a time of turmoil and where we have to look into our hearts and say, what is our role in this world within our space as a coach or a coach supervisor. It all impacts our work. It's within our, the broader system. And yes, we're wrapped in the broader ecosystem where yes, all the life around us is getting a breath because there are not even many cars on the road. So we can maybe see some hillsides that we didn't see before because the smog is lifted. Again, what are we noticing? And what are we sensing in our bodies and surroundings as we're just stepping into nature, which holds all of us and this entire model? So before moving on, Lori, any quick thoughts here? I think you've covered it beautifully, Ken. Yeah, so further into how it comes together within a session. The supervisor with the coach is present to their thoughts and their feelings. What's happening in this relationship parallels, as Lori said. What's going on for them? What's happening within the coach? What's going on? What are they telling themselves about themselves as a coach with their client? What are their patterns, as I was mentioning before? All happening within that relational space, that reflective space. As the coach reflects with the supervisor through that other lens, that relational lens, how do you describe your relationship with the client? What's your empathic stance? What is happening in the coaching case? And within the system, what's happening in the culture? What are you noticing in the enterprise that could impact the coaching? 
very important. What's going on? We just had a change in leadership. How is that going to change the coaching assignment? All of this comes into play within the coaching assignment. So we're going to start moving toward, and, and please pop your questions into the chat. Uh, we're going to use this model practically as we step in to the demonstration in a moment here. And hopefully, as we have been asking you, we're getting some volunteers to come in. And now we'll start to talk about how we work together. Main thing I'd like to highlight is that though there'll be two groups, there'll be an outer group, you know, and there'll be an inner group that is actually doing the work. All of us are reflective practitioners and no one is a spectator, right? Please, we are gonna respect who's doing the work inside the small group, but the fact is we all want to be reflecting and this is how it's set up on a coaching case here. Very important. So you're noticing what's happening in the group and in you. And notice if the questions as they're coming up in the group are relevant for you. And take some notes as you will as desired because we want you to have an experience of learning here and not just watch the core learning that's going on when Lori and I work with the supervisees in the group. So before we actually step in, one thing that I like to do is a bit of a mindfulness um, reflective practice with everyone. I typically do this with my, Lori and I both do this and many of our practitioners with individuals or with groups. So standing, seated, just bring yourself to presence briefly, just a deep breath. Breathing deeply from your diaphragm and out. Really getting a sense of yourself in your body and then noticing your breath. Easy, natural breaths. In a sense, breathing with your whole body. And as you breathe, get a sense of yourself Imagine yourself widening that energy and that breath into the space of this room, this space, all your colleagues, all the chapters, all the good intentions, breathing together. And even further, we are here when there's certain time and place within the broader ICF community globally, all the coaching, mentor coaching, supervision professionals, and the wider world, our communities, our families, the entire world, and breathing in also the ecosystem. Then another easy natural breath, we come back to ourselves, and we are here. So here's the ask, as people are raising their hands, we're asking you to think of a coaching client or a coaching situation. And as you think through the three lenses and reflect, what are you noticing and what are you sensing in your body and your surroundings? What comes up for you about yourself as a coach with your client, about your relationship and your work with the client? And about the culture and the system the client works in. So making this tri-lens model, this reflective model work for you as you're watching the demonstration. So you can reflect and do some reflective practices some of you had chatted and you'd like to do at the same time Lori and I are doing work with your colleagues. So I'm gonna pause and ask Christine, how are we doing with volunteers? So we currently have four volunteers okay. and actually I believe we just also had a fifth volunteer. So we have five at this point. Beautiful. Anyone else would like to volunteer? So we have, oh, we have six. Four. We five. have six. Okay. Five is five is fine. If that's okay. And I appreciate that okay. others uh, for the sake of, of time in the demo. And I'm going to stop my screen share.
and we can bring in and through the wonder of technology make them panelists i believe in the background we can i'm going to start doing that right now perfect to reflect together on what you have seen and heard and you can do this through the chat and christine will be helping us to bring some questions in uh here if you like so we can start wherever you like, and Christine, I know you've been navigating the Q&A. So please feel free to bring some questions in for Lori and I on the experience that we just had and the gratefulness that Lori and I have for doing the work with these wonderful coaches. Where can we begin, Christine? What do you have? Well, Ken, I actually have uh, two questions from the question and answer section that aren't specifically related to the reflection questions, but are related to the topic of coaching supervision. Sure, we can bring in any questions. So the first question is from Sherry Lowry. And she said, in terms of mentor coaching, she uh, and all of the mentor coaches she knows officially, according to ICF, are also credentialed coaches. In contrast, she's seeing a few people who have completed some form of supervision training who are not credentialed coaches themselves. So she's confused about how they're working with clients for the supervision hours. Can you comment on that? Sure, that's a good question. So if I'm hearing it right, um, Sherry, these are not credentialed coaches, but they're credential coach supervisors. Am I hearing that right? Are they, are they saying they are? That's, that's what it appears, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if they're credential coach supervisors, they would, um, whatever training they took would not have been through a, um, quote, uh, certified school. Just as with ICF has the ATCP, I believe it is, and then there's the Graduate School Alliance, if you went to say Columbia or Fielding or others. Um, though they may have gone through some good training, uh, that wouldn't have been with an approved body uh, for them to be a certified supervi supervisor in that way, unless they were a coach first. So with CSA, um, you would have to have become some kind of a credential coach to be uh, in that program typically. And then again, it, since there's some confusion in the marketplace, that will be our job to say, okay, we'll choose a coach, uh, supervisor who was also a coach. So we wanna map it to our experience. Hope that that helps with the answer because there are people out there that may have done that. We haven't seen many, but I can see that that could be the case. Lori, any quick thought on that? I think you answered it perfectly. Thanks, Ken. Sure. Great. And then the one other question that we had, Ken, is um, in reference to uh, the difference between using one on one supervision versus group supervision. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. Lori, I'll let you start there and then I can maybe tag on. I have personally in my own supervision journey, uh, I use an individual supervisor. I also have group supervision and I get different things from it. Uh, so the one on one obviously is very spacious, uh, very evocative about what's happening in my world um, with one person guiding me along. And in my group supervision, I have multiple perspectives and I get to hear other people's cases as well. And so both of those things help me refine those edges a little bit. And there's benefits to both. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I completely agree with everything you're saying, Lori. And as a build on, you know, it, there is sometimes a blended model that we've used where you do the group and then maybe there's some side one-on-one -on -one, um, as well. But the, the one-on-one, -on -one, um, you can continue on a, uh, a journey uh, that can create even um, different levels of depth uh, that you may not see in a group, though with a group you can go pretty deep. And I want to highlight the difference between open and closed groups, because we actually do both. A closed group is like, say, analogous to your one-on-one -on -one coaching assignments, where it's just you and one coachee for, say, six months. Uh, groups can stay together, five or six, and you saw we modeled five for time's sake, that we would stay together as a closed group. So imagine that group of wonderful coaches meeting once a month and that the depth they could get through supporting each other in reflection because they have so much to bring 
as you could tell in their work with Lori, that is my, in my experience, over a course of six months in one group I was in for a year. And then side by side, you may also, and I access both, have a one-on-one -on -one, um, a supervisor. But that's not, in any sense, has to be your experience, but there is a distinct difference between that two, yeah. Other thoughts or questions in terms of your uh, experience and what you perhaps were reflecting on with your own cases as you were observing the group and thinking about your client. Two last questions quickly, Ken, and then we can turn it back to Tanya. The first one was, are the questions that you're showing, the reflection questions, are, do we always use the same questions? The answer is, these are starting point questions. So uh, the answer is no. If you notice, and I'll just highlight it briefly, when Laura and I were working, we weren't specifically saying, oh, by the way, now we're looking through the self as coach lens or self lens or client lens or system lens. We were kind of going with the flow because we were in the moment with Diane and with the, the other coaches. We weren't trying to set up a process, it's not a process model. So these are general questions that we could use and you could build off of this. And you heard um, myself and Lori and even the others uh, bring in different kinds of questions. Lori, anything to add there? I love this, Ken, because uh, Diane made a reference to the balcony at the end, that she was going to sit on her balcony. And if we had more time, I would have invited the group to see themselves as on a balcony observing Ken and Diane and what did they notice. So there's lots of ways we can go at this um, and staying with that supervisee and what's most important to them can be the source of rich data as well as looking at the reactions that we're having ourselves as a source for questions. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful, Lori, and, and thank you for that. And I want to just, before we hand it back to Ty, I want to just thank especially Diane and the group um, but everyone for joining in this rich learning experience and my colleague Lori and Christine uh, for, uh, for partnering with me uh, on this journey. So thank you all. Thank you all. Pleasure to be with you today. Yeah. And I want to thank you all as well for that very powerful experience. I think that's one of the things that people are most confused about is what is this coaching supervision thing and to actually see it. And honestly, I, I wasn't even part of the panel and I was just like, I want to get in there. That just felt so safe and, and, a, and a wonderful opportunity for us as coaches to connect to how uh, we're experiencing our lives and experiencing our coaching is impacting what we're doing with our clients. So thank you both for sharing that so much. And if possible, thank you so much. If possible, if you want to share how folks can get in touch with you, if they have more questions, I see some more kind of filtering in, but we want to honor everyone's time. So if one of you wants to type in the chat, what's the best way to reach you? That's email or whatever emails, whatever you'd like to share or feel comfortable sharing. Yeah, Christine will type that in the chat. And, and when we send the slides to you, the last slide will have our full contact information. Uh, for folks to uh, uh, to tap to tap into, but Christine will put it in the chat right now. Uh, Wonderful. Love to hear from people any um, further questions, and uh, uh, we're here to help. Oh, that's so wonderful. And you can see in the, take a look at the chat and see all the, all the love you're getting over there because it's a, this is a very powerful experience. And to, I think we all have, we're walking away with a better understanding of what all this means. So we're, we're super excited and thank you both. Thank you, Christine, behind the scenes uh, yes. for taking the time today. Um, just so we can wrap up again, going to be conscious and respectful of your time. want to bring your attention to our upcoming uh, Southeast region regional webinar series <laughs> events. I had to make sure what all the letters were, words were in there. Um, coming up, our next one is August 13th, Empowering Women uh, Professionals to be Exceptional. Um, September 10th on Communicating Effectively, and October 8th, Business Practice Development, and then November 12th, Using Storytelling and Coaching. And who can even think about November? Because these last six months seem to take uh, about five years. Um, but we're so excited to continue to create this community uh, and, and to bring in amazing speakers uh, like Ken and Lori and, and Christine supporting them to uh, expand our knowledge as, as coaches and as human beings. And that's, you know, especially in this time, it's so terribly important that we're um, 
filling ourselves up and filling our own cups and taking care of ourselves as well uh, so we can continue to support those around us. Just to have a final wrap up here, if you have any questions about the Southeast Region webinar series or anything about uh, any logistics today from your login, making sure uh, that you get uh, your re registration counted, uh, the wonderful Anique Clemens, there she is, look at her beautiful face, Anique Clemens, our Regional Development Manager for North America. Anique, anything you want to say to wrap us out here as we go? Well, thank you to Tanya and the ICF Georgia chapter for hosting us. I want to say a big thank you to our speakers, Ken and Lori and Christine behind the scenes answering questions uh, to all the participants for, for uh, coming today and for the volunteers. It really was an amazing presentation and demo. Thank you. All right. And we are wrapping this up on budget. <laughs> and under time. So let's call it a day and quit while we're ahead. Thank you all so much. Thank you for creating the space. And we will see you all for the next uh, Southeast Region Regional Webinar Series in August. Have a great day. Be safe, everyone, and take care of your hearts and your, and your souls. Thank you very much. Bye now. Bye.